Okay, uh, final part on second coming of Christ. All right. uh, let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 65. All right. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17 to 25. All right. So we turn to Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17 to 25. Right? We'll read from 17 to 25 together. All right, reading. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that had not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of the tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their heads. They shall not labour in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. All right, thank God for the reading of his word. All right, let, let us pray. Almighty Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for journey mercies once again into thy house for this Lord's Day. Lord, we thank you that we can come, Lord, to study thy word. We thank you for um, the, your prophecies of telling us of what is to come. Lord, so clear, so, um, so vivid, Lord, for us to look forward to, for us to fix our lives, Lord, even as we prepare for what is to come. So, Lord, we pray, help us to study thy word this morning and also, Lord, help us today, Lord, to keep the Sabbath day holy. And uh, Lord, we pray also that you be with the Mandarin, the Chinese BBK upstairs, Lord, even as they study thy word as well. So, Lord, we pray, we ask for thy help as we study thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, um, yep. So, before we start, there's a few typo error in the book. If you all have the book that uh, Uncle Mark um, highlighted to me as well last week. So if you have your book on page 216, there's a few on the old book, 216, there's, a f there's one or two typo errors. So under section 2, when Jesus returns, right, when Jesus returns, there's a few points, right? Personally, literally, visibly, in glory, in power, right? So the one in power, the Bible reference there, says Matthew 24, 20, it should be 24, 30, 3, 0. All right, so if, if you haven't got that one, then you f in case one day you are looking through it, then you might get the wrong verse, right? So 24, 30, and then also come quickly, uh, come quickly. There's a reference there saying Matthew 28, 7 and 8. Yeah, that is not, not correct. So if you can cancel that one out, all right? So there's two typo errors there, all right? So... So thanks, Uncle Mark, for highlighting that, and then um, so that we can fix fix your books as well. Okay, all right. So okay, so today we want to try and finish the this chapter, chapter nineteen, in um, the second coming of Christ, and there are a few things we want to cover. And the first thing we want to cover is is why why we believe in why do why does the Bible Presbyterian uh, believe in the millennium right? and in the premillennialism, right? So, right before I go, let me draw out the timeline so that we can remember how the timeline is.
this, so this was a timeline that we had, we started last week and, and now we're really talking, we, we want to talk about the millennium and the new heaven and new earth, right? That is eternity after that, right? So, so there, are three, there are three main views when it comes to the millennium, right? Um, there's there's um, post-millennialism, which says that Christ will come at the end of the 1,000 year, years, right? So that's post-millennialism. So they say Christ only comes at the end of this 1,000 years reign, right? And, and their belief would be that human, through human effort, right, we have to make the world better and better through this 1,000 years. And then finally, when it is, it is like how, it, how we read earlier in Isaiah chapter 65, then they say that is when Christ will come, right? So that is one view. Right. Another view is our millennialism. Right. Uh, right. Which. Right. And they believe that there is no one thousand years. Right. So they say no one thousand years. Right. It is all figurative. There is no future one thousand year reign of Christ, and. And that is all symbolic, right? So it says not a physical, not a spiritual. Christ doesn't actually physically come, right? And all of these verses that we read is all symbolic, all, all, all for us to just try and interpret as to some moral or some good works or some, some nice things that will happen in that time. But it's not literal, right? And the view that the Bible Presbyterian Church and our church takes is that of pre millennialism, right? So it's one of the BP distinctives, right? It's one of the reasons um, the BP movement was started and so it's as because we are a BBK class, we must understand exactly what, what and why we believe in that, right? So we believe in premillennialism and that is that Christ will return before the millennium, right? He will come and last week like we learned, he will, for the reasons he will come, he will judge, restore Israel and rule over the whole world for this thousand years, right? Okay? So now, why, why do we believe in premillennialism, right? Some, some of you, some of us may ask, right? Why, why is it that we believe in that and not post and not our millennialism, right? So, so we, we turn our Bibles, right? There are a few verses which, which is quite clear, right? And when you read it, it's very hard to actually deny that it is quite clear that Christ will come, right? And that we are not living, right? Because if we are saying it's post, some of them say that means we are already living here, right? We are already living in the millennium and then Christ will come at the end, right? And our millennialism say there is no 1,000 years, right? So, but, but let's, let's look at some verses. So if we turn to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 11, right? Isaiah 11, 6, verses 6 to 8. Right. Okay. Shall we read together Isaiah 11, 6 to 8? Right. 1, 2, 3 reading. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones, shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. Right. So here it describes what happens uh, in the millennium, right? And definitely today we don't see the wolf dwelling with the lamb, right? We don't see leopards with children. You wouldn't put your children with leopards, right? And 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 young lion and fatling together, and the little child shall lead them, right? Today we definitely don't see that, right? Today they, these are animals that are, they are, they are still, they are very fierce, right? And, and so we see all these being described and the child shall even put in the hand with, with the snakes, right? With the cockatrice and he won't bite him, right? But today we don't see that, right? So, so that's one very clear, very clear um, um, description of what it would be like in the millennium. But that men and animals live in harmony. But today we don't see that. So, so we see this must happen in the millennium. So Christ will come, Christ will have to change things, Christ will renovate the earth, and then only during the millennium, right, then we see this, right? 
So also earlier we read in Isaiah 65, right, in 17, right, it says, I will create a new heaven and a new earth. The former shall not be remembered or nor come to mind, right? We read that earlier in 17. But today we don't, right? We haven't seen a new earth or new heavens, right? Today we still live in this same world, right? It is not new. It is, in fact, you know, we see it's getting worse and worse. So, so again, there's another evidence that, that, um, that we are not in the millennium, right? And then also in verse 20 we read, right? There shall be no more dance of infant of days, right? Nor old man that had not filled his days, right? You say they will live very long lives, right? Like in the days of Noah. But today we don't see that, right? We all live, right? To three score and ten years, around there. And we don't see men living like in the days of Noah age, right? So again, we don't see that as well, right? And another one that, that I think is very clear also is Zechariah 14 verse 17. Chapter 14 verse 17. All right, so let's turn Zechariah chapter 14 verse 17. Zechariah 14, 17. Let's read. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Right? So this is another description of what it will be like in the millennium, right? That those who don't go up to worship God, right? Those who do not go up to worship Christ, right? There will be no rain on them. They will not receive rain. But today, we, we still don't see that. Today, rain falls for everyone, right? Or doesn't fall for everyone, right? Depends on the weather, right? But, but yeah, at that time, only, only those who, who worship God, right? Then they'll be blessed with rain. If not, their crops won't grow. They will struggle to survive, right? So even those who do not want to worship God, they have no choice. They will have to go. But today, we don't see, right? We are the minority. Only us here worshipping God on, on the Lord's Day, right? Most of the world, they are not. They are doing whatever they want to do today. Alright, so, and um, if we stay on Zechariah, also we can look at chapter 14, verse 21. Right, the last verse in Zechariah. You see, alright, let's read. Uh, yeah, every port in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Alright, so it says in that time, right, all Israel will worship Christ, right? So all will come, right? Even everyone in Israel, right? Every port, right, will, will, will worship Christ. Christ, right? And there will not be any who don't. But today we see Jerusalem, right? Those who have been to Israel will tell you that they, they hate Christ, right? They don't, they don't, they don't worship Christ. So, so these are all, some of the, these are, these are the verses that tell us, right, that of what it will be like in the millennium. But today we don't see it, right? So if we don't see it, so we cannot possibly be in the millennium, right? So so that rules out post millennialism and our millennialism. And we've seen also last week verses saying Christ coming, right? So Christ is coming. And so it will and so that's why the Bible Presbyterian belief is that Christ will come at the end of the tribulation to start a one thousand year literal reign on earth, right? And during that time, we read last week as well, Satan. Satan will be thrown into the bottomless pit, right? And then he will not be present in this 1,000 years, right? So he will be in the bottomless pit. Today, again, we, we don't believe we see that, right? We see um, Satan tempting us to sin. We see there are many temptations, right, in, in there. But during the millennium, right, we read of how Christ will be worshipped, how Christ will be um, uh, visible. We can see him, right? So, so now we don't. So that's why um, we believe in... in um, 
premillennialism, right? So I tried to see if today the Presbyterian Church still still says they are um, post or are millennialists or what their belief is, and it seems like they they are all just uh, either don't want to address the issue or they will say they are they are post, right? So so a lot of it they don't seem to be, they just don't want to address it. But I think there are verses here that show very clearly, right, that. That the millenn- what the millennium is like, it is undeniable, right? So if the verses are there, it's clear, then we, we believe what God's Word says. So we, that's why the Bible Presbyterian Church takes the belief of premillennialism, right? Okay, so maybe now as we, we start to look at that, now we believe that it's premillennialism, let us maybe look a bit like how, what would life be like during the millennium and the new heaven and new earth, right? So, so we read, so last week, right, we, we studied how Christ comes, right, here, and there's the battle of Armageddon, right? So, so after this battle in which, um, in which Satan will gather all, all the unbelievers to battle against Christ, and Christ will return with the saints at that point, right? And then after that bat- battle of Armageddon, then all, all the... Um, Satan will be thrown in the uh, bottomless pit and the Antichrist and the beast will be thrown in the lake of fire, right? And then we start that 1,000 year reign. So, so Christ will bring in new heaven and new earth, right? Um, so we read earlier in Isaiah chapter 65, right? Verse 17, there's a facelift, new heaven and new earth, right? So this is now the new renovated um, world that we will live in, right? Uh, who will live in, in this time, right? Last week we also started, to, we, we touched upon that, right? So, the saints who return with Christ, right? Who have the glorified body. We also have the surviving believers who enter into the millennium, who, who still have a mortal body. And we also have then the offsprings, right? The children of these survivors, right? And they will also have the mortal body. Right? So we have these, these three groups of people who will live in the millennium, right? So also as, we, as once the millennium has gone in, right? In Romans 8, 8 20 to 22, we have, we've read before, right? That, that the world groaneth and travaileth in sin. But now, once that God had will, once you go in the millennium, God has has renovated the earth, so that curse will be lifted, right? That curse will be lifted, and uh, now we will live in the millennium. For, so, for us who are believers, we will be, we will have a glorified body at that time, and we will live together with Christ, worshiping Christ together with those in the mortal body there, right? So, and. And okay, let us turn to Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 5, right? If we turn to Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 5. Okay, let us read Ezekiel 5, verse 5 together. All right, 1, 2, 3 reading. Thus saith the Lord God. This is Jerusalem. I have said it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. Right? So Jerusalem will be the central city in the millennium. Right? We've also studied in DHW how, how we will go to Jerusalem to worship the Lord right? in Isaiah. So the central city at that time will be Jerusalem. Right? Jerusalem will be the center of all, all worship. That's where um, everything will be centered around. Right? So um, also, during the millennium, right, Christ and believers will reign. We will reign at that time. Right? Um, today, we are the minority. At that time, we will be the majority. Right? Majority of those who reign. Right? We can see that if we turn to Revelation chapter 20. Right? Last week, we read that. So in Revelation chapter 20, we see right, in, verse, in verse 6, right? Okay, all right, let's read together Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. 
and on such the second death had no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Right? So, so the believers, right, at that time will reign, will reign with them, will we'll reign with, with, will reign with Christ during this time. Right? So, for believers, this will be much peace, much rejoicing, and we enjoy labor at that time without trouble. Right? Um, whereas today we are persecuted for being Christians, we are persecuted for our faith. But at that time, there will be peace, rejoicing, and we can labor without trouble, right? Um, we also, at that time, we, were, we read, right? Animals, men, all live together, right? In harmony, right? So that's another, that's what it would be like, right? And we also read, we will live hundreds of years, thousands of years, and in this new environment, right? Which is, which is, um, which, which is renovated, okay? Okay, but, but there will still be sinners even during this time, right? So, because of this, the children of the survivors, right? They will still be, they will still be um, sinners at this, at this time, right? So, um, right, let's turn to Zechariah again. Zechariah 8, 20 to 22. All right, if we turn to Zechariah 8, 20 to 22. Okay, so if we look at Zechariah 8, 20 to 22, right? Okay, let's read together. One, two, three. Thus said the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass, that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus said the, oh, sorry. The Lord is, sorry, it's not, that ten men shall take hold of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. All right, so at that time, they will go, they will go to worship and even sinners. Salvation will still be available, right? The gospel will still be available to those who will seek him, those who will go to believe, right? We just read that those who believe, they will want to go, they will go and they will find, about, find out about the gospel and they will believe, right? So it will be available to them, right? And at that, at that time, we also see how we read earlier about not having rain, right? That there's no rain for those who don't believe. So there's still punishment for those who refuse to believe, right? At that time, for the sinners, if they, for for the for for the unbelievers, right? If they are still um, refusing to to worship God, then they will also go through um, punishment, right? So at that time, there will be punishment as well, All right? There will still be sin because of the unbelievers at the time. And there's also death, right? So they, when they pass away, if they don't believe, then they will, they will go to, they will be put, put to hell as well, right? So at that time, we see Satan will be bound, right? We've learned that Satan will be bound, and and Christ will be seen by everyone on earth, right? There will be glorified bodies, uh, all of those who are believers, but yet there will still be those who reject God, right? Last week we read in in Revelations, right? At the end, they will still want to rise up again with Satan to fight God. So even, even then, even though it's so clear at the time, you can see Christ, right? You can hear the gospel, right? It is very clear. Christ has come, you know, Christ is ruling, but yet they will not believe, right? And it just shows that men on their own do not want to believe, do not want to, um, to, to repent of their sin. And it is only by the grace of God, right, that we are saved. That by the grace of God that He will call, right? Those that he called, then will believe, right? So, and even without Satan at that time, right? And even though we can see Christ, right? There will be, we, there will be those who refuse to believe. So we cannot blame Satan, right? We cannot say that Satan is the cause of our sin, because even at that time, there will be some, there will be those who even when without Satan will still reject God, right? 
So, so even uh, like today, people may say, if you show me a miracle, then I will believe. Right? At that time, there'll be, they can see the miracle, but yet they still won't believe. Right? So, so does miracle save? No, miracle does not save. Right? It is only faith right, that will save. So, right? so at that time, we will, be, we will be the majority. Christ will be ruling. And then we'll come to a thousand years. Right? And in the thousand years, at the end of the thousand years, right, then Satan, Satan will be released from the bottomless pit, right? And he will gather all the unbelievers, right? Those who want to rebel. They are waiting, waiting for him. And they will gather together to fight one last battle with the Lord, right? And, and it will be the, the final Gog and Magog battle, right? So here they will have the Gog and Magog battle, right? And, and again, that battle will not last very long, but it is the final battle, right? And it will end all battle in, in, our, in mankind's history, right? So that will be the final battle. And then the Lord will return, and this time He will burn up the whole earth, right? And, 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 and there will be a new heaven and new earth again, right? This will be a brand new one, and then it, we will live together there in eternity, right? And Satan will be cast into the lake of fire together with Antichrist and false prophet, right? So, so okay, let's, let's turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 21, right? So let's see what, what it would be like in, in, in the new heaven and the new earth, right? Okay, let's read from verses 1 to 4. Uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 4. Here, okay, 1, 2, 3 reading. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Right, so this describes right what it will be like in eternity with, with, with in the new heaven and new earth. Right, so we have a new heaven, new earth, replacing the first heaven and the first earth, and the new city, new Jerusalem, the holy city, new Jerusalem, will be God will bring down from heaven. Right, and and then that that will once again right that will be the 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 center again. This new Jerusalem. Right, so. All things will become new, new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. And, and if we, we look further in 21, it also describes this new Jerusalem as being built with precious stones, right? Streets of gold, right? And, and in verse 18, right, the city was pure gold. And in verse um, 21 as well, it says, and the street of the city was pure gold, right? So, yeah, it's... Today, gold is so precious, right? So expensive for so little. But at that time, right, the city is pure gold, right? I always remember uh, my first project when I was an engineer, when I graduated, was on a gold project, right? Um, about 100 kilometers out of Perth, right? And it was a huge mine. It was, it was, the pit alone was hundreds of meters deep, right? And we built a huge mine. And when we were finally about to finish, then I managed to get to go to the gold room, right, which is the final product, the gold room where we finish the, the product that will, will, will get sold, right? And I was expecting this very big, very grand room. And I went in that gold room, it's no bigger than our cry room, right? Because that's all, that's all they need to keep the gold. That's all. After so big our mind, that's, the product is just like that, so little, right? That's all they needed. And the safe was half, probably about less than half the size of the cry room. And the gold room is, is just like that. That's all. That's all they need to keep because they say that's it's so expensive. A few bars and then one van comes in, one security van, 
and then they come and collect the gold and, and take it out. So after all this effort, all we need is just one van to ship it out, right? But at that time, at this time, right, in the New Jerusalem, the streets will be gold, right? All this will be, will be of precious stones, right? Today, right? Precious stones are also so expensive, so precious, right? But at that time, it will be like common, right? And, and the lesson here is really that all these things that we work for, right? Gold, silk, you know, all these things that precious stones that we think are so valuable today, in that time, it will be everywhere. The street is made of it, right? It will be like nothing. So, so all this, right, we, we, we learn, we know, we see, is really for us to realize that all of these things, some of these things that we, we may hold precious in our heart, at the end, in the day, it will be used to make pavement, right? It will be used to make the walls, right? It will be common. It is not worth our effort to, 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 to strive, to build up, you know, gold, money, all this. In the end, it will be nothing, right, when we are in eternity with Christ. And that should change the way we think, the way we understand, the way we live, right? We look forward to, to that time, right? And rather than um, trying to strive, trying to build up these things, right? Which in the end will either be burned up or it's so common, it's worthless already, right? And none of it we can bring with us anyway, right? So, so yeah, so, so, so that, that would be life, would be like in, in, um, in the new heaven, new earth, and only believers with immortal bodies will enter into this final eternal world, right? So only believers, and, and it will be an eternity here without sin anymore, right? And it will be an eternal worship of God, right? So, so we look forward to that day, right? And, and God has put these verses in the Bible so that and tell us of what is to come, so sure, so certain, as His first coming is, so that we can, we can know, right? And we can uh, make sure that our lives, right? That we are, have our lambs trimmed, ready for His coming, right? Okay, so, so that is what life, life is going to be like in millennium, in new heaven and new earth, right? Okay, then we see what are some responses to this message, right? When people hear this message, what, what is our response, right? So in, in our BBK books, on, in page 218 in the, in the old book, Right? We see there are, there are a few different responses, right? And the response of how we respond to the message tells us of what our heart condition is like, right? So, so we, we read, we hear what are some responses and, and we reflect, right? Let us check our own hearts, right? Are we looking forward to this? Do we know it's coming? Or do we, do we like some, want to deny it, deny it right? So, so if we look in our BBK book, right? First is some... Sorry, not two one eight two 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 zero. All right, so two two zero. Right, so so unbelievers. All right, so if we look somewhere, Second um, Peter. There's a verse there in Second Peter. Right, and there's also a typo error there. It's Second Peter, chapter three, verse three and four. Okay, so if you go, I think some books still say Second Peter chapter two. If you got one of those, you can correct correct that to say Second Peter chapter three. Okay. All right, so, so let's read the ita italicized words, All right? There shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. All right, so there are some who will say, Where, where is this Christ coming, right? Never come, right? It's still the same. And even in that time already there are some, right? The apostles, they say, already fell asleep. They already died, right? They're gone. Where is this Christ coming? We still don't see it today. 2,000 years, more than 2,000 years later, right? Many, right, have already stopped, stopped believing that Christ will come. Right. I was I read the, I was reading up on to find what the Presbyterian belief was and there was a Presbyterian minister who wrote, he says, it's quite embarrassing these days to talk about end times like as if it's apocalyptic, right? As if you know Christ will come, it's apocalypse, it's so embarrassing. Say so let's not talk about it. You know, God will fulfill what he will fulfill. Let's just don't don't talk about these things, right? And let's focus on social gospel, moral improvement, and then things will get better, right? So there are there are some who are who who already believe in, in that way, right? So 
So, and it, it, it is sad because God's word is clear, right? Very clear that it will happen, it will come, right? So, so but some already say, right, that, that nothing has happened, so they don't believe it will come, right? And some reject, some will not accept it, will not trust what God's word says, but, um, but yeah, so that is some attitude of, of unbelievers, right? Um, attitude of the apostate church, right? So in section 2 here, under this section, right? I was saying, yeah, some Presbyterian ministers say it's too embarrassing, right? They don't want to, they don't want to teach it anymore. They just want to avoid it. They say, it, you know, um, it doesn't sound possible, right? But, but God, God, God says it, then we believe it, right? So, so um, yeah, so, so we, we, we cannot fall into the same trap as these churches, right, who, who don't want to teach what is to come, right? Because if God put it in there, then He has a reason. It is for us to, to prepare ourselves for the things to come, right? So the third one, right, the third attitude of dead orthodoxy, right? So this is some people who, who understand it, right, who, who know it in their heads, but don't believe in their hearts, right? So they know this is going to come. They know that 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 it would that what what Christ says is true, but in their hearts they don't believe, right? They still continue to live for the world. They still continue to live and and as if the world will go on forever. This is where they put their treasure. They don't put their treasure on things in heaven, on things uh, in the of of to come, right? So so they they also say they believe, but in their hearts, in their actions, they don't believe, right? They don't they don't they don't correct their lives, they don't fix their lives, they still live for this world, right? And the last attitude, right? What should the attitude of the believing Christian be, right? So it should be, we are prepared for His coming, right? We have our lamps trimmed and ready, and we look forward, look forward to this day that is coming, right? We don't know when it will come, but we look forward to it, and, and even when Christ tarries, right? It's, it's only because then it gives us more time to fulfill the Great Commission, right? More time to go to tell people, right? Because once Christ comes, then, then the time for us to tell, right, is, is, is over, right? So, so now, when, now, wherever we have opportunity, right, then we tell them, right? Our, our colleagues, our friends, family, these are, these are, while well, Christ still tarry, then we have the opportunity to continue to give the gospel, right? So, so that is the attitude of the true believer, right? And, and the last section here in, in this chapter is, so beware of false prophets, right? So also uh, one danger, right, which I remember when I was young growing up, there was very, everyone trying to predict when the end of the world is, right? Trying to predict when, well, is it year 2000? Is it, when, when is this? Is it the, uh, yeah, 2000, all the clock will stop and then, you know, the end of the world will come, right? But, but if we look, <clears throat> if we look on, on that, on page 2 to 3, right? In Matthew 24, verse 36, right? It says, right? Let's read Matthew 24, 36 together. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Right? So, any attempt to try and predict, right? When this, when Christ's second coming will come, it will be futile, right? He will not know. He will come like a thief in the night. Right? We, we will not know. All we can do is just be ready, right? It could be today, it could be, could be even in our children's lifetime. We don't know, right? But all we can do is be ready, prepare them, right? Get them ready as well, right? That they are always watching, looking, and getting our lives ready so that when Christ comes, we will not be found uh, wanting, right? So, so, yep, that, so that is the, um, Completion of lesson 19, right, on the return of Jesus Christ. And, and yeah, so let us make sure that we know, we are sure what we believe in. And, and then, then our lives Lord, will also then follow, follow what we believe. Right? So next week, Pastor will return for BBK. And then he will uh, probably continue on the next, I'll start the next chapter on lesson 20. Right? So... So we thank God that we uh, can study this chapter um, 19 and, um, and indeed um, study and be prepared for what is to come. All right? So let us close in a word of prayer.